Hello, and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop board game bag check. Today we are checking in this classic game. We've got an Aaliyah. I don't know if there's a big box. I think I just have to assume it's the Aaliyah big box series. Might be the Aaliyah medium box series. I don't know. Aaliyah puts out a bunch of fantastic Euro games. Um, I almost would say German games specifically from German publishers. Uh, put out under by the uh, Ravensburg, published in North America. Uh, this is number seven in the series. It just There's multiple series. There's like the big box, the medium box, the little box. I'm going to guess there's a medium box series. Um, I am a huge fan of pretty much every game I have played from the series. Uh, to me, that's something, if I see a Leah on the side with a number at the top for a game, that's what, so if you display it on your shelf, it looks all pretty. Um, I, it's an insta-buy. I, I don't even need to re read a view. I'm going to buy it. I'm probably going to love the game. Uh, that is the case with this game. I didn't personally purchase this. This was a gift from my mother-in-law. Thank you, Brenda. Uh, purchased at our Windsor Extra Life auction, something we do every year in November. Um, I know nothing about this, except for the fact that it's an Aaliyah box game produced by Ravensburger. It's going to be a Euro. It's probably going to be thinky, and I'm probably going to love it. You are going to get to see the components in this box at the same time. I see them for the first time. You get to hear my thoughts live, which is why I do this here on Twitch. If you are watching here on Twitch, make sure you hit the follow button so you know when I go live next time. Uh, which is usually Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday afternoons. Wednesdays, we record the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, where we answer your gaming and game night questions. If you got a question you'd like myself to answer, uh, you can send it to questions at tabletopbellhop.com. Consider me a dear Abby for gamers with uh, much more facial hair. Uh, the other thing you do is head over to uh, tabletopbellhop.com, find a bunch of other tabletop gaming content. That's it for self-promotion. We're going to start off by cutting the shrink wrap off of this with a... Uh, Trusty hobby knife, always cut away from yourself, never towards. <clears throat> so on the back, we have German. So let me find the English here. We got a bunch of different languages, but the top is in German. Hear ye, noble knights, engage in the competition at the royal round table. The closer behind King Arthur you are, the greater your prestige will be. <clears throat> An easy to understand tactical game with a vari with variety as well as increasing difficulty level. Like that, it just, the box just said, I'm a Euro game. English rules in color included. Important, right? Because that's what happens when you get German games. Um, I don't know. There, there's a table with a pig in the middle of it and a bunch of people sitting around in some rings. Looks cool. Let's see what those components look like up close. All right. We got a rather tiny rule book based on the size of the box in multiple languages. So I'm not going to try to read this one. We got German. We got French. And then we have English. Uh, skinny. Small text, a little bit hard to read for my eyes at this point. Lots of italics. Uh, there's a format that Aaliyah uses for all the rule books that I actually really like, which is you have the main bulk of the rules here. And then like a summary on the side. And what's great about that is once you've learned the game, like the first time you play, you're going to have to read this. When you go to revise, reread re the game, reteach re it. So it, you haven't played in a month. So you pick the game up again. I find you can get away with just by reading the sidebar. So we're looking at one, two, three. And again, same deal. You have the main rules and then the summary in the sidebars. Four, five, six, seven pages, eight, including the back. Um, the back is just a card reference. Dark text on a light font, which is nice, but a very small font. This is one I'm probably going to have to take my glasses off to read. Uh, not a lot of art. There's a lot of wall of text here. What looks nice, though, is it looks like they call out the important rules. There's some nice symbology in here. It definitely looks like a card-driven game. I see lots of cards in here. As noted earlier, I have not actually played this. Rule book looks decent enough. Um, definitely has a dated look to it. There's almost no art, almost all text. Not necessarily a bad thing. Does look like a Euro though. All right, then we have a puzzle piece shaped board here. Interestingly, we have a score track on the outside. We obviously have a, the table with a lot of chairs. There's a lot more Knights of the Round Table than I remember here. Okay, that's kind of neat. Um, these don't hold together, but you can tell that once you put the middle in, it's obviously gonna hold both these pieces together. Uh, Single-sided, there's a pattern on the back for no reason. So man, if you wanted to do a D&D &D skirmish on the back of this, you probably could. Uh, then we have a table in the middle. So it looks like this. It looks like we may be getting uh, some kind of Lazy Susan thing going on here. So that's cool. This has numbers 1 through 10. 
then yellow zeros, and then negative one through negative 15. Oh, I'm sorry, I have a ton of glare here. So we have a table that obviously is gonna fit in the middle of this board somehow. And then we have whatever this piece is that's gonna hold everything together. Uh, everything fits nice. That's a nice, actually, I obviously I have that backwards. There you go. Nice solid fit there. Another nice solid fit. And obviously there's gonna be some mechanism to hold this together. Nice small board. Um, this actually could be a problem on my table, which is a rather large four by four gaming table, but good at a normal, like coffee shop table thing, as long as there's no player templates. We have some punch outs, which include a pig. <laughs> there's the pig. The pig somehow holds the middle board together. What's interesting is I didn't see anything that told you how to assemble this board. All right, you know what? Let's do it. Let's try. Let's see what we get here. Punch this middle out. Let's put this here, put this here. Yeah, I know, I'm on a slight angle. There we go. Put this in the middle. Punch this out. That goes there, and then the pig supposedly somehow holds everything together. No, there's obviously more to it than that. I'm missing something. I'm missing some aspect of this. I'm not sure what it is. But we'll look at what else we have. Maybe, maybe we'll find out. Yeah, okay, here we go. I got it. All right, so in these bag of components, I'll open this up. There is this piece of plastic, which is going to go in the middle. And then the pig is actually like a standy. Cool. Pig standy, look at that. That's actually pretty cool. I gotta admit, that, that's, that's a neat little bit of uh, engineering there. Very cool. Pig makes your nice turntable board. A little cooler, uh, in a way, to me, a little neater. Very, very, this is the Euro version of Zolkin. Not that Zolkin's not a, Zul uh, a Euro game. Very cool board, very neat, I, I dig it. That's neat. That's well done. That is a well-made component. All right. Distracted by the, the neat board. My bad. Let's get back to the components. A uh, bunch of 50s. That's it. 50s. Obviously for tracking something. Let's get all this stuff out of the way. So um, let's throw it in the top of the box. Bring this back over here to see what else we have. So I got that bag out of here. This bag has all kinds of standing... And the guys, so tall pillar-like plastic ponds. It's a gold. I have to assume these are probably in player colors. I do know just from looking at the back box, these are gonna stand on various spots or at least on in the chairs. We have all kinds of those. Uh, the bag that I took them out of, I did rip, but it does have a baggie, like an actual baggie to put these back in, which I am gonna do. So nice, thank you for including baggies. People at Ravensburger, whole bunch more of these ponds. They're a solid component. I was a little worried they were gonna tip easily, but no, actually. Like, yeah, you could knock them over, but that's not, it's not terrible. I am gonna keep at least one of these out. It's one of the things I got to see from the box. Here, this one's gonna stick out more. Yeah, the silver shows up a lot better in the camera. So we have another baggie here. I'm gonna toss the cards in there when I get to them. all of them all right yeah, these rings these rings i know again this is not a sealable pack so tear parts apart go on top of these pretty cool i don't know why or how just i could tell from the back of the box oh these are plastic not metal but they're metallic we'll hold that up to the camera so you can hopefully see it a neat, neat, neat component. It's, a, it's not something I've seen in another game before. I am going to toss the rings in the same baggie here before they get lost. Then we got a ton of cards. That's a, that's a significant deck of cards. Does have a nice quick open. Thank you, Ravensburger. Crack that open. We're gonna start off by putting this out of the way and looking through by the backs of the cards. Uh, okay, so they all have keys on them, but these have scrolls at the top. These have crowns at the top. 
shield. Scrolls, but with a different symbol. Crowns with a different symbol. Sorry for the glare. Shields with a different symbol. Fish. Okay, I am going to go with crown. Fish with crowns. Fish with shields. Another set in a different color. All right. So we have probably the four different player colors. We've got um, Lion Rampants in with shields, crowns, and shields. Or sorry, scrolls, scrolls, crowns, and shields with keys. And then the pheasant with scrolls, crowns, and shields. We'll look through the pheasant deck. We have people with numbers on them. Decent artwork. I'm a huge fan of Miko. This isn't Miko's artwork. Uh, all the same art. Slightly disappointing. So all of the shields have exactly the same artwork on them. Um, but different values. So same character standing there with his helmet with a bunch of different values. That is, in particular, the pheasant shields. Then, um, similarly, we have very similar artwork set the background for the pheasant crowns. And then, wow, very not artwork. Looks like probably endgame scoring or something for the pheasant scrolls. Just to see if they're the same, I'm going to grab the keys. We have different, completely different artwork for the, the character. Right? There's the one there's here. Well, similar artwork, but different. Um, a different prince and more of these. So unique decks for each character. Yeah, that's a diff very different prince. This is uh, the fish. A very different fighter style and more of those. The last deck being the Lion Rampant. We got the Knight. We got, I don't know, the Soldier, the Prince, the Crown Prince. Bunch of different cards. And that's it. That's what you get with Artis. Again, I haven't played the game. Looks interesting. I am extremely impressed by that player board. Scroll back in the video and you can almost watch me play with it for a little while. Um, ton of cards in this game. No buzz on this game. Uh, maybe people were going nuts for it in 2011. I gotta admit, it looks cool. Um, big fan of the Aaliyah series of games, this being number seven in one of the series. Uh, unique looking game. Some very tall pawns for playing pieces that you put rings on somehow. No clue <laughs> what the actual gameplay will be like. Bonus points for including baggies. Everything fits in the box nice. I'm gonna show you a trick that I do with all of these games from Ravensburger. I take the German and the French instructions and I throw them under the box insert. <laughs> There's your pro tip from the bellhop today. A couple extra cardboard pieces and I'm going to get to my kids because I know they'll dig them. Especially a little disc with wooden bits. And everything's going to fit back in here great. Make sure I don't lose the pig. Place to put everything while not being a complicated insert. It works. Interesting use of a, a standy thing to hold the board together. I dig this. The, 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 the engineering on this little puzzle piece to be able to make the Lazy Susan board. Very cool. I am actually more excited about this game now than when I first got it, having opened it up. That was Artis from Ravensburger Aaliyah. Uh, published in 2011. Older game. Nothing new here, but... One of the uh, Aaliyah Medium Box games, number seven in the series, by M. Kiesling and W. Kramer. I know that's Wolfgang Kramer. I don't know Kiesling's first name. Uh, well-known German publisher, well-known German gamer, uh, game designers. Uh, pretty much, if you find an Aaliyah Gold Box game, you're you have a Euro game or a German game or a designer game in a box. That's what you expect from these games. I didn't see any dice in there. I didn't see any miniatures, and I didn't expect to. Uh, looked as good as I thought it would. Really dig the way the board goes together. There's some really neat engineering done there. Really looking forward to checking this one out. Uh, if you want to hear my thoughts when I check this out, be sure to head over to tabletoplhop.com where you can see uh, that's where I publish all my game reviews and stuff like that. We also talk about them live on Wednesday nights at Twitch, twitch.tv slash tabletopbellhop. Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern, you can catch us recording, myself and my co-host Sean, the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast. Uh, reviews are on there, but the other big thing we do there is we answer your gaming and aim night questions. Every episode we pick at least one question that someone's asked us 
and we talk about it, we discuss it, we answer the question live on Twitch. Uh, that gets cut down and put out on YouTube as video on demand and released as an audio podcast on Tuesdays. You can find that audio podcast on all your favorites, podcatchers, streamers, etc. Uh, you can also just listen to it at tabletopbellhop.com. Or as I said, there's also a video version, YouTube, YouTube slash Tabletop Bellhop. Everywhere, Tabletop Bellhop, one word, nice and simple. That's what you call branding. Tabletop Bellhop, one word, everywhere. Tabletop Bellhop, that's me, Mo Tuzno. Uh, one other place you can find us is Patreon. If you dig the content you see at tabletopbellhop.com, if you like these unboxing videos, if you would like even better videos with more light coming from above, which is something I would love to do, head over to patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop and consider tipping your bellhop. That's it for me. I am Mo Tuzno, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge. Good night and game on.